So, hey there, guys. Honestly, I know it's been a while since I've ever done a video for a while, but I honestly had to talk about this one. And to be quite honest with you guys, I never thought I would actually be reviewing a romance-style manga, but here we are. Now, what a lot of you may not know is that, really, I'm not a particular fan of romance, mostly because I look at it as really obnoxiously cheesy. But this one really captivated my attention because it's not your typical romance. For one, the kind of romances I'm more partial to are the ones that are like, there's chemistry that is built up, built up, built up, built up as the series progresses. I think one of the better ones I can give as an example is Steins Gate's Okabe and Kurisu. Because throughout the whole series, you see these two constantly going back and forth at each other, knowing how to push the other's buttons, and yet at the same time, you see their growth in chemistry. Until eventually just builds up, builds up, builds up to the very climax, when it shows how these two feel together. And I honestly thought, this is amazing. This is the kind of feeling I got with this manga right here. But now to, but now to get to the main subject matter. Haru's Curse by Asuka Konishi. And apparently this is actually their first English debut manga. Which really surprised me, and I'm honestly really glad I get to talk about it. So, Haru's Curse is more of a tragic romance. Or I should say, a romance built from tragedy. See, the main premise of it is that our main characters, Natsumi and Togo are two characters who have come to the realization that they have feelings for the other. Yet, the tragedy part of this is that Togo, the main male lead of this book, and keep in mind, this is actually a book, not a full manga series. Because apparently this whole manga went for like 10 chapters. And he's moving back to it. So Togo was actually the fiancé of Natsumi's now-deceased younger sister, Haru. And Haru apparently dies from cancer, but surprisingly enough, after the funeral, it shows Togo and Natsumi just starting to date each other. But Natsumi had a very unique condition. She said that if she wanted to date him, or if she agreed to do it, that Togo had to take her to the places that he went with Haru. So over the course of the story, surprisingly enough, we actually see the change of seasons from like summer to spring to fall to winter. And it really just goes to show the passage of time throughout this manga. And I thought that was actually really fascinating that each chapter was named after a change of seasons. So the whole story revolves around these two coming to terms with the fact that they are actually starting to feel something for the other, and yet they also have to come to terms with the guilt that they feel, as they feel as if the spirit of Haru, the younger sister and fiancé of Togo, is practically watching them like some form of curse. Hell, Natsumi herself struggles the most with this guilt, because she honestly feels the most guilty for just going out with Toga straight after, well, almost straight after her sister's funeral, she's actually dating her sister's former fiancé. And it was really well done with the story and struggle with these two characters because they both felt a massive amount of guilt feeling like they were insulting Haru's memory as they were going out with each other, and yet they also had to struggle with the fact of their newfound feelings for each other. Now, literally, it's actually revealed later on in the book that Togo actually had feelings for Natsumi, which I thought was a really neat twist. Honestly, it's just this whole build-up and coming to terms with the feelings that they have for each other as well as choosing to bear what they call the curse of Haru's memory surrounding them. 
And I really love the whole story of this, how Natsumi reveals that she really thought of Haru, her younger sister, as the only family that she really had. And it shows that unique family dynamic that both of them actually shared. By both of them, I mean Togo and Natsumi. But honestly, it really goes to show how similar they were. And I thought that was honestly freaking amazing. Now, the art style for this manga is very, very simple. And yet it is detailed when it needs to be. For instance, with facial expressions like shock or... Well, yeah, mostly shock is what I saw. It's whenever they went wide-eyed like that or a realization, in other words. Just that visible expression of shock was the major detail that I remembered seeing throughout this manga. All in all, though, it was very well drawn and very well done with the story. The story is really what kept me going throughout all of it. Honestly, I would definitely highly recommend this manga if you want a just a book style manga that's a bit thicker and will take more time to get through and is actually in a more compact form because this is it. It's the one large book and then you're done. And it really tells a really well done story that for me, I was actually surprised that I actually got into. All in all though, I really liked Togo and Natsumi, their internal debates and struggles in hell. Natsumi even struggling with suicidal thoughts of wanting to join her sister, whom she felt was the only true family she had. Whereas Togo himself practically tells Natsumi that if she tries to commit suicide, he's dying right along with her. And that sort of mental slap to the face, I guess, really kind of wakes Natsumi up and makes her realize that she does not want to be the cause of Togo's death. And the fact is that she wants to do it to herself. She wants to commit suicide to join her sister. But it really goes to show how throughout all of this, they begin to realize they're attracted to each other and they wind up just wanting to make their own choices and make their own lives. Really just get out of their bad family situations, leave it all behind and start anew. This manga was really well done. I highly recommend it to anyone who reads this. But now, let's move on to the score. So honestly, the best I can give this one is an honest to god 10 out of 10 in just sheer story quality alone. Just the story, the simplistic art, the way it just grabs your attention immediately. Honestly, I cannot recommend this manga enough, and if anyone here who actually watches my videos knows any other good romance stories like this, whether in manga or even just short story format, please let me know in the comments below. I would honestly love to check these out and talk about them for all of you. And you never know, I might actually become a fan of the works that you all recommend. Anyways, thank you all for listening. Have an awesome day. This is Rambling Collector, signing off.